You know, earlier in the program, we had uh, the governor on the show, Ms. Gabby Burksteller, who was talking about festivals in Salzburg, and, and there are a lot of them. Um, and uh, and not surprisingly, given the history of, of this city, and joining me now, the president of the patrons of the Easter Festival, among other things and other festivals, uh, Michael Berger Sandover. How are you, man? Hi. That was your answer? Hi? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> That's even better. We'll get there. How many festivals are there in Salzburg every year? Um, the main one is in summer, and then we have the um, Easter festival since '67, and then we have the Mozart Woche, end of the January. The Mozart what? Mozart week. Ah. Mozart Woche, we okay, call help it. Me out. End Go of ahead. January, and uh, then we also have a small one during uh, Pontrecourt, uh, Whitson, just three days. Normally mid of May and beginning of June. So basically, the, the calendar is sprinkled with festivals. Yes, absolutely. What's the most important festival? Um, I would say the most important, the most famous is the Summer Festival, founded in 1920, um, and has always been a very international festival, drawing crowds from all over the world, and also having among the artists all great international um, conductors, singers, directors who have been coming here for a long time. And the Easter Festival was founded by Herbert von Karajan in '67. as I said, it's, it's a very special one also, but the concept is different. Which means? Which means that the most famous German orchestra, the Berlin Philharmonic, are exclusively performing here in Salzburg Opera. Uh, this year, for instance, we have um, glamorous American soprano Emily McGee singing Salome, the most famous German orchestra, Berlin Philharmonic, conducted by one of the most charismatic conductors, Simon Rettel, from England, here in Salzburg, Austria. And this you don't get anywhere else. Now, I have to tell you, I many, many years ago, I was talked into going to the Opera Ball in Vienna. And uh, what an amazing experience, right? Talk about music. I mean, first of all, I had to go get dressed up. I came on the carriage. I was white tie and tail. I felt I was the only person there not a count or a countess. I, I, the only one there not wearing a sash, you know. And I walk into the opera house in Vienna, which, of course, is completely redone for this particular ball. And they start off with, and I'm like, oh, isn't this interesting? And they have all the debutantes coming out dancing the minuet. And isn't that lovely and quiet? And lo and then all hell breaks loose. And they're dancing and crazy all night long. Nothing but every different floor, different music. There's jazz and they're, right? And it's amazing. It's true. And, and they have copied it. They have tried to copy it all over on earth. And never forget, this. Uh, it's the only day when the Viennese state opera makes money. Is that true? That is true. <laughs> Opera needs to be funded in Austria heavily by the government. Uh, in America, it's a bit different, but in America, it, the, the government also gives money because through tax deductions, the companies can can uh, more or less pay, 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 pay. Government pays the same like here, but in Vienna, it's the only time they make in Vienna. Profit. What about what about, it, what about in Salzburg? Salzburg, we don't have an opera ball in Salzburg. No, but do you make money at the festivals? We we do make, but we could never uh, live without the support of the government. But you know, uh, we draw so many visitors every year, so the money uh, uh, is coming in. And actually, the uh, city, the county, and the state, through taxes, make quite a lot of money out of it. But we need to be uh, subsidized by the government as well. So basically, it's like baggage fees with music. Um, baggage fees and music. Yeah, if you put it this <laughs> way, yes. <laughs> I just thought I'd put it in but here's no so you understand. Yeah. yeah, here's no surprise because you know what you get and you know uh, the, the, the amount you have to pay. And there's no surprises in the evening when you get in that you have to pay for anything. How close? I mean, w when people say we're having a festival, you know, and somebody's listening to the show say, hey, let's go to Salzburg this summer for the festival. Can they come? Can they get up close and personal? Or, the, or they're in the, or in the seat so far back they need a telescope? No, that is not true. Um, you know, the time uh, has changed. Uh, we, have, we are surrounded by festivals, major festivals all over. Uh, every year there's another one com coming up somewhere. Um, it's no problem to come also spontaneously. And uh, actually, even for the most attractive performances, you can always have the chance to get a ticket last minute. And for people who want to book way in advance, see, for me, I w I'd come from, even though people don't want to come in January because they think it's too cold, that's when you have Mozart Week. It's a lovely festival, but the very special one is in spring. It's the Easter festival because it's the most lovely time in Salzburg. And it's not as crowded as in summer. Oh, but, yeah, but nobody's showing in January for the Mozart Week either. Oh, they are. They are. They are. Uh, maybe less Americans, but uh, coming people mostly listening to Mozart and the classic See, repertoire. I want to go places where there are less Americans. Um, Listen to me on this then one. Then don't Trust come me. to Salzburg. No. <laughs> 
What I mean is, but we love if I can, if I can come here. to a festival where there are not 85 escapees from Cleveland and I can actually see myself immersing in the culture, wouldn't I want to be here in January for the Mozart Festival? <laughs> exactly, but maybe you can start to bring more Americans at the Mozart Woche, Mozart Week. Well, obviously, when, after this show, of course, they'll show up because they won't, they won't think of their own meals. We'll be here. I love it. What's the biggest surprise, very quickly, that, that people find when they come to Salzburg that they're not expecting to see? Um, they probably think uh, to see a very old uh, um, opera house itself. When they go to Italy, they see these most historic places like uh, Teatro San Carlo in Napoli or Teatro La Sc alla Scala in Milano. Here we do not have really an old opera house um, because the, 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 the two m main ones uh, performance are taking place. Uh, one is uh, built in 1960 and the other one was just reopened a few years ago. So maybe that's a big surprise for some. I have heard it from Americans because they uh, um, think we will have, that we'll see here is to historic opera place. All right, Michael Berger Sandhofer, who tells you to come where the Americans aren't coming. No, I'm kidding. Thank you again, man. That Thank music you. means radical.